here at the Outside Game Super Bowl week in Miami. Jonathan Casillas, thanks so much for coming through. When I say Super Bowl, what comes to mind? I got two rings. That's what comes to mind first. <laughs> Just being honest with you, bro. That comes to, comes to mind first. But let me let me be real though, for real. This game this weekend is gonna be crazy. So when you say Super Bowl, I'm excited. I mean, the matchup that we have, you know, San Fran against probably the best player in the NFL in Patrick Mahomes. Definitely the best quarterback. So it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited about it. It seems like you might want to be out of the field this Sunday. Ah, uh, yeah, but then I go ahead and go like this to my neck and be like, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm <laughs> still retired, you know? As the players on both teams are getting ready for this game, as someone who's won two, was there something you learned maybe from the first, the second, or some key piece of advice you can pass along? Not really, just don't get caught up in a hype, you know? Treat it like a regular week. You know, don't do anything special. Have somebody else hand you your tickets. You get 16 tickets. Everybody wants to go to the Super Bowl. Everybody in your family wants to go. You only have 16. Now, you might only have a few family members, but when you get your Super Bowl tickets, you're gonna have a lot more than 16 family <laughs> members. They're gonna come out of nowhere. So that's number one thing is like, don't do anything crazy. Don't spend too much time on the tickets. Don't spend too much time on the hype and doing Instagram posts now. Just treat it like a regular week. Focus how you normally focus. Get your massages like you normally do. Your workouts in the same way. Take that same effort and practice. It's a little harder in the year because your body feels like crap. It's like week 25 you know, of the season. But you're playing for the grand prize. This is why you play the game. So be mentally ready for it. Block out the noise and focus because, you know, you're going to be part of history. Was that something that you learned through the first Super Bowl? Did a veteran player gather everyone around and say, look, here's how to get through this successfully? How did you come to these lessons? Well, when I was playing for the Saints the first time around, I don't think there was any Super Bowl champions on the team, you know? We had a lot of experience, a lot of talent, a lot of leadership, Drew Brees, John Vilma. I mean, you could name the guys that was on the team, but no Super Bowl caliber, but Drew Brees had us ready. Vilma was the leader on defense. It was tremendous to have those guys. And if you look at this game, you have guys that put up numbers like Drew Brees. Mahomes putting up 5,000 yards a year when he, play, when he plays all 16 games. We know that we know that's gonna happen, you know? So, this is how I see it. Mahomes is the newest, the newest, greatest quarterback. Like, we've had our Tom Brady's, you know, we're seeing, you know, kind of the end of that saga, that, that book is pretty much coming to an end. Peyton Manning with the numbers he put up. But what eluded both of them was the numbers in Tom Brady's case and the rings in Peyton Manning's case. Now we have Mahomes, who's gonna put up numbers like Peyton Manning, and I think he can roll off some some Super Bowls, and I think this is going to be the first one. It's funny you mention that because that gets to the point of this idea of legacy, right? You win a championship, part of your legacy, right, is you have, you have two rings. No matter what else you do in life, right, that's part of your identity. We were talking earlier, and Keith Bullock was talking about, well, before you ever have a legacy, you have to have a mentality to achieve that legacy, to achieve your goals. And think back on your playing days, what was your mentality? You know what, I was uh, I was undrafted and that kind of sparked, you know, a flame in me that it was there, but it wasn't ignited as it was when I went undrafted. It was heartbreaking for me and, you know, I just, I never wanted that disappointing feeling again, you know, because you put so much into football. You know, it's not like, you know, other things like school, you know, a lot of people half-ass school. You can't half-ass and get to where I got to. You can't do it, you know, so I put my all into it. So it was so like heartbreaking and I never wanted to feel that ever again so I carry that with me every day every day I work I was a special teamer you know my first you know four or five years in the league then I became a starter and I became a captain a defensive captain for the New York football Giants in my hometown you know so with that being said the mentality that I have was that jersey stuff you know that moxie I, I carried that with me and I still do to this day you know and uh, I think I'm gonna be able to transition away from ball you know good because of the things I learned from football and that approach, the same attitude that I have, that jersey stuff that I have with football, I think I should be able to apply it, you know, afterwards. Now at the outside game, we often talk to athletes about what they're doing outside of the game. I know we talked back in September, you have a lot of things going since you stopped playing football, involved in CBD, trying to grow your business. How's that gone since September and what's ahead for you in the future? Well, the CBD stuff, I was working with somebody that I'm not no longer working with, so it's kind of 
town hall right now. But the thing is, I've been doing so many different things that that was just one thing that I was doing. You know, I have a big event coming up. It's uh, the Read Across America, you know, for like Dr. Seuss's birthday. Uh, I'm doing a Power Mental Literacy, literacy Tour, um, and it's through my foundation, uh, the Four Progress, Jonathan Sears Four Progress. And we're going to do 20 schools. Last year we did 14 schools in the state of New Jersey. I did 10 schools, all of the schools, K through 8 in New Brunswick. And basically I read a book to the younger kids and just explained the importance of being literate and reading. Reading all the time, not when you're at school, but when you're home. You know, making it an effort to your parents. You know, letting your parents get involved and have memory to you. You know, that's the kind of the message that we're trying to instill. And that's the, the thing I've been doing since I retired. I took a step back and looked at what am I passionate about? And it was always doing stuff with the kids, you know. So I got my Fort Progress camp that's going on its seventh year. And this is the second year I'm doing my Empowerment Through Literacy Tour. And I'm so excited about it. I'm going to get some local Giants and Jets, you know, guys that come around. Uh, some Jersey guys that play throughout the league, they're going to come. You know, so I'm very excited about it. Um, and that's the things I like to do. And that's the things I'm doing now post-ball. The CBD stuff is going to come along, but I mean, I'm doing fitness stuff. Um, like, you know, I'm just all over the place. But number one thing was to get back to the kids and get back to where my roots and what you know where where I was raised. Well, and I, I see your Instagram posts, and I would say no matter what you're doing, the through line is that it's a lot of positive energy. Where does that come from in you? That no matter what you're doing, you seem to be doing it with a smile on your face and with a positive focus. Well, I think that's what life is all about. You know, um, take the, the passion of Kobe Bryant. You know, it hit all of us tremendously, but. Why? Because he was such a tremendous person. He wasn't just a basketball player. He was a man of men. He did his, he had his sins, and we all saw it, you know, and he responded. He finished his career of 60 points on the way out at 37, whatever, whatever, 36. He was old as hell. That's what he was. <laughs> but like, he showed us how to be great when you dedicate yourself to something. I did that with football. Now, take to step away from the game, I want to do the same thing. His passing has impacted so many athletes. I was talking to some of the other players here tonight. Did that give you the idea to reach out to someone you hadn't talked to, text a friend you hadn't heard from, just try and spread some love? For sure. Um, I reached out to like immediate family members, just all telling them, you know, I love them, you know, and uh, my daughter, I, was, I have a schedule with, you know, with the kid, I got a daddy schedule. I wasn't scheduled to see her, and I was coming down here, and I was like, you know what, let me go, and just go kiss her, give her a hug, and I just met her at a Popeye's with her mom, you know, for like 10 minutes, you know, they was on their way home, and they stopped at Popeye's, I was like, look, I'm, I want to come, just, just give her a hug, you know, and, and that's the kind of impact that that had, you know, like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have left without seeing my daughter, like, right? that would have, that would have never happened. One of the beautiful things that came out of that was, I'm sure you saw it trending, was hashtag girl dad. Girl dad. I did see You're that. One of those. What does it mean? I'm adopting you? that. I, I saw it. I have yeah. a vision already. Yeah. We got to take some more pictures. I got a lot of throwback Thursday pictures. Sure. Girl dad hashtag. So I'm ready. I'm prepared. Why do you enjoy being a girl dad? Man, let me, let me tell you something. Uh, I grew up, uh, my mom has four boys. Um, I have extra brothers and sisters on my dad's side who I grew up with. So I grew up with my fair share of boys and, and girls. I raised both of my little brothers and then my also my little sister. So I kind of thought I had an idea of what raising a girl was, but you, you, there's nothing like having your own little princess that looks like you, you know, and the, the, the learning curve as a man, as a man with male parts have to deal with a miniature female in that situation makes you grow up as a man and dealing with the emotional process of women in general, you know, and, and it's it's made me so much better as a person. I enjoy her, she's my best friend, like we talk all the time. Uh, FaceTime, we talk every day, like every day. We don't go a day without without speaking for at least a few minutes. And like she called me, like she, like one of, I'm one of her friends, like, hey dad, what you doing? Who you with? Like, what are you questioning me for? What do you mean? What are you, you're eight years old, stop questioning me. You know, we got that, you know, that type of relationship and there's really nothing like it, you know, like, 
I, I'm such a girl dad. When I saw that hashtag, I was like, yes. I'm stealing that. Like, I'm putting that on all my posts. Excellent. Johnny, you see us. Appreciate the time, and Keep up the good work. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it.